Hey, what's up, guys? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us on another exciting adventure. And for today, I want to talk about some Father's Day gift ideas. So, as of time, as of the time of filming this video, Father's Day is about two weeks away. So, I thought about eight gift ideas of gear that I personally love and approve of, and it's easy to get your hands on it uh, for that father in your life. Whether you, you know you're getting something for your dad, your grandpa your husband, or even for yourself. You know, if you want to treat yourself for Father's Day, I think this is going to be some great gift ideas. Now, for these gifts, for this video, they're going to be 100 bucks or less in terms of budget. So, if you recall last year, we had another video like this, Father's Day gift ideas, and in that last year, it was $50 or less. So, that one's a little bit more budget-friendly, and for this one, so they're not competing, this one's going to go a little bit higher. Not necessarily breaking the bank, but it is a little bit pricier. So, feel free to check out that video if you go in a little bit more budget-friendly. It still holds up. But once again, for today, it's going to be eight video, I'm, I'm sorry, eight gift ideas that I personally love and use often and approve of, and I think they'd make great gifts for that father in your life. So thank you for joining us. Let's get started. Okay, so gift idea number one, let's go ahead and start with the outdoorsman's favorite piece of gear, and that's going to be a knife. So right now we are going to talk about the Mora Garberg. So this is an outstanding blade. Now Moras are, you know, outdoorsmen are no stranger to Moras. Mora has a rich legacy made in Sweden, going on for about over a hundred years, I would say. And uh, they make great knives. A lot of budget-friendly knives, classic outdoorsman knives. But this one's the Garberg, which was released about five, six years ago. This one's a little bit more rug rugged, more robust. So this one goes all the way through. It's a full tang, which most Moras are not. In fact, outside of the carbon version, no modern Mora is a full tang other than these. But this one is the stainless version. And this is a great blade. The, the steel is 14C28N stainless steel it is a great steel that sharpens very easily but it is very resistant against against the elements like rain and snow stuff like that scandinavian grind for whittling carving batoning and then a 90 degree spine very sharp for striking fair rod for making fire uh, in fact one time i cleaned my arm you know when you when you strike a fair rod to make a fire it leaves this residue on the blade and one time i tried to clean clean that off, wipe that with my arm, and the spine of the blade actually cut me. So it's that sharp. Very comfortable handle, plastic handle, and then there's a small pommel over here for crushing things like pecans, shellfish, acorns, whatever the case may be. A very sturdy blade. This one runs you about 70 bucks, 75 bucks, if you get the sheath that is polypropylene or plastic, basically very fancy word for plastic. It's okay, it's functional, it's fine as is. You run this through your belt loop and it's all right. But great blade. I have a review on this one from a few years ago. If you guys haven't seen it, well, we made a fire, we cooked up a pack rat. Um, yeah, great blade. In fact, it also even came out last year in my bug out bag video. So I made a bug out bag based on desert survival and the knife that I went for, for my bug out bag, is this one. You know, in case I didn't have no other blades, I need to, you know, always have one in that bag. This is the one I'm going for. Once again, I like the fact that it's very resistant against the elements and hard use. And uh, yeah, great blade, once again. Now, once again, the sheath is this polypropylene plastic sheath. In case you want to go a little snazzier, the price will go up about 10 bucks to about 85 to 90 dollars but then you can get a leather sheath for it once again supplied by mora and i apologize this one's a little dusty we are out in the desert but this one's just uh kind of just makes it a little snazzier it goes in there you can button it down and once again it'll ride on your belt just a little bit more elegant now let's go ahead and talk about the gar the carbon garberg and that's this one right here as you can tell, it is almost identical to the stainless version outside of the color on the blades. So this blade is blued. That's why it has that black on black look, but it is made out of 1095 high carbon steel. So it's going to be more traditional in sense of a high carbon steel blade. Some gentlemen, they like that. They're more traditional about stuff, you know, uh, and then also some 
prefer a carbon blade because in an emergency, in a pinch, you can strike the back of this uh, with a chert, flint, that kind of stuff, quartz, and you can make sparks. So if, if an emergency, all you had was your knife, you can make some sparks to hopefully get a fire going. Carbon is going to be far more susceptible to the elements such as uh, rain, snow, humidity. You, you, you know, you process game with it or something and you forget to clean it. It is more likely to rust. So uh, just make sure that they're they're well aware of that. But other than that, it's not bad. And then back here, once again, it has a pommel for crushing as well. We also have a review on this blade as well. So be sure to check it out up here if you'd like. On that one, we start a fire using striking the back with a piece of flint. So we made, made a fire that way. We process a kangaroo rat to cook up. And then we use the pommel to pound down some yucca root to make some soap. So it's still a great blade. Uh, it still comes with the same options, by the way. So for about, I want to say this one is about 70 bucks around there. So these are basically both, uh, you know, item number one. It's just depending on which one you would prefer, which one, uh, you know, that father in your life would prefer. I personally like the stainless better, but that's just me. Both are great. You can't go wrong with either. Okay, so here is gift idea number two. Now, apologize, I am a little, a couple feet away because it's very hot. It's 100 degrees even at sunset right now. And, uh, you know, we're getting a fire going to cook up dinner, but it is just, we're cooking out here. So, this is the firebox stove. I recently got this about a month and a half ago, but I'm, I'm loving it. If you haven't checked out our last week's video for cooking ravioli, uh, we use this thing and it's just amazing. I really love it. Now... There is a lot of companies that make little twig stoves and that kind of stuff. But Firebox One, it's an American-based company. It's made in America. I'm always you know, happy to help out a small business, American-made quality. But not only that, there's just a lot of versatility. And sadly, I don't have a lot of recorded footage, but you can do so much with this thing in terms of um, how you can alter it so it can cook different things. You know, There's different little bed things on top that we'll show later uh, because we're gonna cook some brats on here. Um, you can open this little flap right here. Whoop, wrong stick. Need something a little stronger, but uh, maybe I should have thought of that <laughs> before getting the fire going. But you can do that, and it's going to allow more, for more airflow. All kinds of stuff. Like I said, we're going to be cooking up some brats in a little bit, but I really am enjoying this firebox stove. Now, this might be the most priciest of the items. Um, runs about 95 bucks, I want to say, on Amazon. But once again, you know, we have not reviewed this one yet, but just give us a couple, like, maybe six or seven months to test it out in different environments, different seasons and that kind of stuff. But so, but so far, I'm really enjoying it. It is hot out here. Even right now that it's close to sunset, we're still at about 98 to 100 degrees. Uh, luckily, I have my gift idea number three, which is a hat, a wide brim hat, better known as a cowboy hat. So this one in particular is the Stetson Blackhawk right here. And what I love about this one is that it's plentiful as compared to my other older brown hat that everybody asks for, but they don't make anymore. This one can be found regularly, like on Amazon or Western stores. And uh, this one's made out of 100% wool. Now, wool's a quality material, particularly if you're an outdoorsman. So for that dad that's, uh, you know, he's going to be out camping, fishing, come rain, come shine. You know, a nice relaxing hammock trip during the spring months where the nights still get a little cool or, you know, frigid weather, you know, late January, you know, winter camping. This is going to help keep you warm. W wool is an insulator, so it's going to help keep you warm during the cold months. But at, during the hot months, it's going to help keep your head cool relatively. OK, I'm not saying that it feels like a refrigerator in here right now, but it's going to help kind of bounce off the heat. 
uh, other properties of wool that are really awesome is that one it's going to be water repellent and two it's going to be burn repellent as well so that's once again great for an outdoors hat now this one is slightly customized this one was a gift from cuervo back in like february before we went on a on a hunting trip and he, he customized the hat band for me and then i added this 30-06 shell from a hunting trip um yeah i just like a little bit of asymmetry in my hats so I added that. So if you decide to buy one, it's not going to come with this band or this bullet. Obviously, this is just customized. But it's a great hat. Once again, wool. It's crushable. So, you know, you don't got to worry about babying it, you know, if you drop it with your gear while traveling. And then this three-inch brim is going to be helpful. Once again, being out in the desert, it kind of keeps the glare out of your eyes. It's really useful when you're hunting or something like that, looking for something in particular, and you don't have light bouncing into your eyes. This hat runs you about 75 to 100 bucks, depending on the size. But once again, a really great hat. Uh, gift idea number three is the Stetson Blackhawk. To keep cooling off a bit, let's take a little break and... Uh, have a drink, have a soda. So that brings us to gift idea number four, which is gonna be a good old classic Swiss Army knife. Now this one is the Victorinox Ranger Wood 55. This one is Cuervo Negros, and it is an absolute beauty. If you old school Junkyard Fox viewers, like back, like my first four videos I've ever made, like six years ago, will recall that I actually had one. Uh, back when it was Wenger Ranger Wood 55 before Victorinox bought that company. I mean, look how beautiful this thing is with those walnut scales. Very comfortable, very good looking. And I think this would be a great gift for that dad. Once again, the fisherman dad, the outdoorsman dad, the camping dad. You know, uh, just, you know, if he's into EDC, you know, uh, they're, it's going to have a locking blade. This is a good old flat grind right here. So it's gonna be great for cutting up food, skinning, uh, I'm sorry, gutting fish, that kind of stuff, cutting cutting up meat. And then it's the buttons right here, the logo. It's a liner lock. So you press it down to close it up. And then we have ourselves a pretty decent sized saw right here for woodworking, you know, uh, all that stuff. Carving notches, for example. We have a bottle opener slash cap lifter, which is gonna come in handy right now. All right. Excuse me. Oh, that hits the spot. Anyway, let's keep going. So then let's close this bad boy up right here. Over here we have ourselves a can opener and then with a small flathead screwdriver right here. And then back here, we have an awl with a little eyelet. And then this one's a little unique because it does have a corkscrew. Now there's more uses than just opening up the corks on wine bottles, but that's the main use. So if your dad happens to be a wine connoisseur, uh, I think this would be great for him. And of course, Victorinox Swiss Army Knives, you know, they have such a rich legacy in history, so that's an added bonus. Look at this beautiful lizard. He's big, too. Um, so let's go ahead and finish up the rest of the gift ideas. Uh, gift idea number five is going to be the MSR Pocket Rocket 2. This thing right here. So I got this back around December. It was a gift from Leo from Irish Zombie Nation. And it's just, it's a portable gas stove. So it comes in this little container so you can put it away in your haversack and your backpack. And uh, I don't have it with me. I don't have the gas canisters with me. But, you know, you'll see it in B-roll here. You attach it onto a canister and then from there you light it up you open the the little levers here the little arms and then you just turn it on and what that does it's once again it's a very small portable gas stove like you saw earlier you know we showed a, a twig stove for example a folding stove but sometimes it's just too hot or sometimes just a there's just um, fire restrictions in our area around this time of year. We're, we're, there's fire restrictions everywhere. We were meant to film um, this video 
in New Mexico, in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, but we can't because there's a fire restriction. Uh, we wanted to go to the Davis Mountains in, in Texas, fire restrictions. So sometimes you're just not going to be able to have a good old-fashioned campfire, so our gas stove is going to be handy for that. It's going to come in handy to cook your meals, make your coffee. Uh, not only that, but sometimes, at least for me personally, uh, there's there's sometimes where I am not in the mood to make a fire. Like like early morning, like when we're camping like in December and it's just freezing outside. You know, I just want to have my coffee. I don't want to, you know, struggle with you know, getting it going and, you know, so this is going to make it far more convenient for something like that. So I really recommend it. I think it's a game changer. Once again, just like the firebox stove, this is going to be useful for that dad that really likes to get out there and make his meals outdoors. But this is something a little bit lightweight where um, he doesn't have to worry about, you know, gathering tinder and all that stuff. This thing's just going to be good to go. So once again, the MSR pocket rocket is a great gift. So gift idea number six is going to be a book. Now I have many books when it comes to self-reliance, trapping, preparedness, all that stuff, but this is the one that I recommend the most. I think this is basically like the Bible for preparedness for me, at least for me. Uh, this is When All Hell Breaks Loose, written by Cody Lundin. You may have heard who uh, Cody Lundin is. Uh, this is this gentleman right here who's been practicing self-reliance and bushcraft skills in the Arizona desert for the last 25 plus years. Uh, he's very, very famous for coming out in the Dual Survival Show, a show that inspired me to get into all this outdoor stuff. Um, and this book is just incredible. I mean, it's 450 pages. He covers a wide array. I mean, the the widest array of topics when it comes to preparedness for like a an urban disaster, uh, hygiene, you know, um, trapping, how to, you know, all this stuff. He's very knowledgeable. Not only that, but there's going to be moments where he's going to talk about a, a subject matter that he's not particularly, you know, an expert in. So he will consult an expert and, you know, interview him and, and they'll go ahead and talk about it here. So uh, just a wealth of information. And don't think that, you know, it's a boring book. Like there's a lot of like funny cartoons in here and jokes, uh, quotes all this stuff i don't know how the legal system works with showing the inside of a book on, on on videos but um i don't know let me see let me show you like um like he'll have little cartoons you know he will have like little quotes you know, from throughout history. Uh, and then he will, you know, go into history, you know, how what these people in China were doing during this time when they were starving or, you know, during this revolution, that kind of stuff, you know, and it's just an eye opener. Um, it's not necessarily like fear mongering, but it's just good to study these things and practice them. I have learned so much from this book uh, and it's great. Once again, now this is gonna be for the book reader dad. If your dad really loves reading, you know, I highly recommend it. Or, uh, you know, for that father in your life that, you know, he's a working Joe, so he's not able to get out there and go on fishing or, you know, whatever adventures, you know, every weekend. This is something that he can study and learn in the meantime, um, learn from here. So a book that I highly recommend, I think it sells for about 15 bucks on Amazon. I do think you can get it a little cheaper, like if it's from a secondhand website, but uh, great stuff. I cannot recommend it enough when all hell breaks loose. As for gift number seven, one more knife. I know we've been a little knife heavy for this video, but it's gonna be the Mora filleting knife. Now this is a Mora, just like the Garberg that we talked about earlier. So it has a rich legacy, made in Sweden, quality materials, but this one's gonna be for fishing. So for that dad that really enjoys fishing or even just cutting up parts of meat, you know, butchering and that kind of stuff, this is gonna be very useful for him. And this may be the cheapest item, the most affordable item, in our suggestions it runs about thirty dollars i have a review on this one if you want to check it out uh, but it's a great blade once again it's mora so it's quality we know that now the the blade itself is made out of 12c 27 steel it's that's a stainless steel same kind of steel that they use for their cons bowl their companion all that stuff i really love their steels very resistant to the elements but at the same time it sharpens up very easily the blade length is 6.1 inches and there, it has some flex to it, of course, because, you know, when you're processing your, your catfish, your salmon, whatever the case may be, you know, you want to just, you know, fillet it out, get some nice big chunks. As for the handle, it's the same handle as the Mora Companion, if you own that one. It's very comfortable. 
and the rubbery grip's going to help when, you know, your hands are all wet with blood and that kind of stuff. Uh, and, the, the, of course, the plastic and rubber is going to just uh, outlive uh, a knife that's you know, has wooden, wooden handle, like a Rapala, for example, and if it's not taken care of. So this is just going to be more comfortable and it's going to last longer. And the bright color is going to help, you know, if, you know, fishing in low light conditions, that kind of stuff. It's easier for the eye to pick up. As for the sheath, it's a very simplistic sheath made out of plastic with a lot of air vents in there just to get the uh, whatever water may be in there and it snaps right in. So instead of having a leather sheath that once again, you know, during humidity, during rain or, or you know, whatever the case may be and, you know, he checks it a month later when he's going to go on another fishing trip and it's all rusting, that's not going to be the issue. This helps dry it out. But uh, yeah, great little fishing knife. It's not meant to be taking the place of your belt knife, of course. But once again, just for that niche of, you know, processing fish or cutting up butchering meat, this is going to be very useful. And last but not least, item idea number eight is my favorite flashlight of all time, which is going to be the Thrunite T1 flashlight. I love this light. I got this in 2019 and since then it has just been like love at first sight. I just love the versatility of it. I love the size of it. Um, I've yet to find a light that I like more in terms of carrying with me every day. I like it so much that <laughs> check this out. So it rides here in my pocket and you can like legit see where my jeans are starting to tear with the edge of the flashlight. I carry it that often. So. I love the fact that I love the size. It packs a punch without becoming too cumbersome, too bulky. But at the same time, there's just so many just things going for it. So Through Night makes great products. I'm sure I'm not, you know, blowing anyone's mind there. Everybody knows that. But um, the fact that it's USB rechargeable, I think, is really useful in today's day and age. And it's less wasteful. I hate being wasteful. I don't want to be throwing batteries and stuff like that. So I like that. The back is magnetized. So your dad that works in a garage, if your dad's a mechanic, something like that, I think this is gonna work great for him. Uh, one time I was helping a buddy unload some uh, washer and a dryer from the back of his, the cab of his truck and it was dark and you know, and it's a delicate process to bring it down. Um, so I placed this against the side of my truck and you know, ma it magnetized. So it's able to, we have light while we're taking care of that stuff. So I thought that was really cool. Um, other than that, I like the versatility of the light. It's small, but it packs a punch. And it, it, you're able to do what you want. I'm sorry, I'm, hung, I'm still hungry there. But um, check it out. So I'm able to bring it infinity high. Now granted, it's daytime. So uh, it's not going to be as, you know, as dramatic as, you know, check out a review. I'll have a review up here if you want to see it in complete darkness. Or you can bring it as low as you want. And I really enjoy that. I think that's really cool. I'd rather have, you know, my say of how I want it exactly. And then I turn it off and it just remembers where, you know, it has the memory where it remembers where I left it. As opposed to having to settle for three or four options in, in terms of lumens. So I really enjoy that. Now this light runs at about 34 bucks at this point, And I cannot, once again, I cannot recommend it enough. I love this light so much. So once again, for everyday carry, if your dad's uh, into preparedness, if he's a mechanic, you know, something like that, I think this is going to be a great light. Whether something goes bump in the night out in the campsite and there's, you know, some animal in your campsite or just, you know, general preparedness. This earlier this year, we had a, a severe sun, a th a snowstorm in Texas and we were out of power for days on end. So having illumination is going to make a very big difference. And I mean, for 34 bucks, you really can't beat that. It's such a wonderful light. So once again, my last suggestion for Father's Day gift ideas is going to be the Thrunite T1 flashlight. Well, folks, the sun has set. Night quickly approaches, so we're about to pack it on up and get on out of here. So this is the conclusion of this video. I hope you found these gift ideas useful. I hope you see something here that you like, and if you do, we'll have the links down below to our Amazon store where you can purchase it. Uh, once again, all this is gear that I personally approve of. I would have to say about six out of these eight items have actual dedicated reviews, so feel free to check them out in case you want more information on them. Uh, Outside of that, in case you didn't really see anything here that you found useful for, you know, that outdoorsy dad, keep in mind I'll have the link up here 
for last year's Father's Day gift ideas video. Uh, so you may find something there as well. Th that video still holds up. All those, all that gear still holds up. And that's about it for us, guys. So happy Father's Day before anything. You know, some, you know, it's cool to get gifts, but there's more to that. And um, let's not forget that, you know. So cheers to all your hardworking dads out there. You, you guys make a big difference. Um, and that's about it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and comment down below. What are you thinking of getting that father in your life? Or if you are a father, what outdoors item have you been eyeing that you would be so you know happy to get if your family you know, knew about it? So go ahead and comment down below. We'll get the wheels turning and get a really cool conversation going. And that's about it for us, guys. So we'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. <laughs>